21. 21. That's that theory, right? So if s of t, if I write a function, s of t is my position, okay? Then we've discovered that s prime of t velocity. is the velocity, right? So that's what, this is where all this calculus business comes from. Newton wanted to study the rate of change of the rate of change with regards to gravity and acceleration. So if I take the derivative of velocity, which is s double prime, which is the second order derivative of uh, position, well, that gives me the acceleration. Now, in physics, at the high school level, acceleration, uh, it, Physics in, at the high school level, all the problems that we do are under constant acceleration, but in reality, nothing is constant in the universe. So even when we say the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second, that's at sea level. Truthfully, it changes as you get further and further away from the center of the Earth. So a change in acceleration is possible. Now, if you were to try to figure out the change in acceleration, what would you do next? Triple prime, very good. So I take the derivative of acceleration, which is S triple prime. Now we call that jerk. You're a jerk. Jerk. I know. Yeah. You're a jerk. No one's ever said that song when I've taught this lesson. Anyways, so the change in acceleration is usually pretty rapid, and that's where we say I, I jerked this way or I was jerked that way because it's really a, a change in acceleration, right? Yeah. Well, that's what, when we're talking about motion and we say jerk. You know, now, if somebody, somebody gets off topic in an AP calculus class or something, you might refer to them. Jerk's a little strong. But, um, so anyways, so jerk usually is represented as a function of J of T. And so sometimes we'll say it's the, um, it's the change in acceleration with respect to time. And another way that you could write this is that it is a, this is another way to look at triple prime. All right. So let me, let me, I want to focus on this notation because that's what we're going to use for the next thing. So if I say S of T, right, this is position. Now S prime would be the derivative of S with respect to T. Which is really the derivative with respect to t of the function s. Okay? Does that make sense so far? Yeah. And we, you're correct. We would call that velocity. Now, so if velocity is ds dt, and I wanted to find acceleration, I need to take the derivative of velocity, right? Because that's what acceleration is. So I would say d dt, right, of ds. So how would I write that? Like that. I forgot to write this down here. So this would then become d squared s over d t squared. t squared. Now, remember, that's just s double prime, right? Where this is s prime. You guys with me so far? So then jerk would be s triple prime, which would be d dt, which is the derivative with respect to t, of d squared s dt squared, which is equal to d 3s or dt cubed, which is which is another way to write jerk. 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 Yeah, I'm, I got a little carried away with the marker there. All right. So now I wrote all that stuff down because example number three. It says uh, the jerk is caused by a constant acceleration due to gravity where g is equal to negative 32 feet per second squared. So jerk is d dt of g is 0. Why? Because g is a constant. So we don't feel a jerk because the acceleration is constant. There's no change. 
In fact, well, you do feel a jerk at first, right? So if I hold the ball in my hand and I let go of the ball, as soon as I let go of the ball, then there, your acceleration changes from zero acceleration to 9.8. So there's a, a very small jerk at the beginning of letting go of the ball. And think about that at an amusement park ride, right? So physics day at Six Flags, you get, stop, you get at the top hill, right? And just before you fall down the hill on a roller coaster, there's no acceleration on your body. Then when you fall, you feel the jerk, right? So there's a change in acceleration. But once you fall, then you, you feel other things, which is going to be um, forces at play and stuff. But that's one version of jerk. But now let's revisit example number two. Now, I don't remember if you guys, just to kind of refresh your memory of what example number two is. Example number two, we covered an object that was connected on a spring, and we stretched the spring out five units. And then we let go of the spring, and we said that the position of the spring over time was modeled by five cosine of t. And then in example number two, we said that the velocity at any point in time t, so right here would be t equals zero, uh, was modeled by the derivative of this. So this is the position. The velocity would be negative 5 sine of t. The acceleration would be modeled by the derivative of the velocity. Um, the derivative, which is just negative 5 cosine of t. And then we said the acceleration would be modeled by positive 5 sine of t, right? Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but then we have the negative, so the two negatives cancel. So this is uh, the acceleration, and this is the jerk. So as this thing changes acceleration rapidly, there'll be a jerk. And the jerk will be at its highest point um, right before it changes direction, right? There's Because there's a jerk in acceleration. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Uh, that's actually example number three. Zero? Well... Example number three just wanted us to go from here to here. Oh. If we, we calculated in example number two what the acceleration was, and then example number three wanted us to calculate um, what the jerk was.